We are all uh, from different backgrounds, in different areas, uh, different disciplines. But the good thing, what I'm going to be talking today, is going to touch to all these areas. Uh, it is uh, a technology that will uh, impact the future. And uh, or, you know, we call it nowadays uh, vertical sectors. Uh, coming from uh, health, agriculture, transportation, uh, everything uh, is going to be impacted with the technology that I'm working, I'm going to be talking about. So I'm not going to get into the details too much, a flavor of where the world is going, uh, what we are doing in terms of research, and how it is going to relate your work, your science. Okay. So let me get started. You know, the things that we are doing is too heavy and we can't do the little things, okay? Just, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, hi, <laughs> I have to do wireless. Uh, Şey yapalım onu, ha, tamam. Tam, tam ekran yapalım, tam ekran yapalım. Nereye istiyorsan at ama tam ekran olsun. Bunu, are you able to see this, uh, everybody? You can hear me well? Okay, again, welcome to Turkey and uh, enjoy your time while you are also getting all this knowledge. It's a beautiful city. I have been almost everywhere in the world, but I have never seen any city like this. I mean, like, uh, even though I'm not enjoying it uh, because of the work. So everybody is talking about basic science, right? I mean, uh, probably, you know, whoever comes will because that, that's the main theme. And uh, my area is information and communication. ICT, we call it ICT, information and communication technologies. And uh, probably wherever you go, you hear that ICT is the future. I mean, like in the past, we had these, uh, you know, machines, cars, okay? That was the revolution. And some countries dominated, like Germany, like Japan, and they were very big in that technology. Okay, uh, but uh, the future is ICT. So we are moving from, you know, that century to a new century, and which will be everything will be dominated with these two things: information and communication. And of course, new players in this world, in this new world, is like China, Huawei. Uh, big companies, and uh, like uh, uh, Elon Musk, uh, Starlink project, a big project, deploying satellites, covering the whole world, uh, like Facebook, it's also information, and connecting everybody. The aim is to connect everybody, not just the people, human being, but everything with each other your home, your appliances, your cat dog, and whatever the plant that you are growing, your farm, the trees, everything eventually will be connected with each other and connected to you. So the society, the human society, is being engaged with the environment that it's living, they are living, okay? So environment and the human integration is the future and it's coming. And probably you heard about nowadays the technology of 5G. 5G is the current generation of this communication technologies. And uh, on these days we are working on 6G. 6G is gonna be the technology 10 years from now. That is the technology where everything is going to change. Everything. The way that you live, the way that, you know, uh, you interact. I mean, like imagine 20 years ago, everything was different. Even the cameras were different, right? We had these analog cameras uh, where we take the pictures and that, that this like kind of machine, you know, we were and we take the pictures to a, a photo a house where they produce it and then give you the hard copy and then we send those hard copies to our families, right? Those days are old now. Today, you know, with these things, 
can take the picture even before you know it, it will reach to your kids, to your family. I mean, my son had a wedding. Before the wedding finished, all the wedding ceremony, all the pictures were received by my friends in the United States and they were kind of call, calling me. I said, well, I didn't even have those pictures. So it's that fast, okay? So the world is changing and everything is being connected and everything that it touches, it will change as well. Your areas will change if you are working in the health area or if you are working in the uh, other areas. So that is the world that I'm in right now. Uh, that is the technology that I am working on, okay? Information and communication. But guess what? At the base of this technology, it is the science that we are using, the things that we have learned in high school and then later on. For example, I am the dean of an engineering college. The first two years is pretty much the same, whether you are a civil engineer, electrical engineer, computer engineer, industrial engineer, uh, food engineer, the first two years are more or less the same. What is that first two years? Calculus, physics, right? Math, because that is the science. If we are gonna train engineers, the best engineers, we have to make sure that they know the basics. They know the foundations, the fundamentals of what they are gonna be building. That is the science. Science is very important. <coughs> When I'm looking for a PhD student, yes, I want a good student in the area, like electrical engineering is my background, but when I interview with them, I always check their background in math, in calculus, in physics, okay? If they don't have that, they can't build anything on the top of it. So that is, the, you know, the foundation. I prefer to get a student from basic science rather than getting a student uh, from an engineering. Because I can always teach engineering, but teaching math and physics late in the stage is not that easy. So if they have it, they have it. If they don't have it, you know, it's very hard to train them, okay? Anyways, <clears throat> so in my area, of course every area has some foundations, depending on, you know, for example, uh, uh, in engineering, especially in my engineering, okay, in ICT, calculus is very important, linear algebra is important, complex numbers, it's very important, random process, probability, because in communication, everything is random, okay, everything is random, and, but with some structure, and you have to know, it's like a stock market. Do you know what's gonna, what, what will happen to dollar tomorrow, euro tomorrow? There is some randomness, okay? Uh, but if, if, but it, it comes with some structure as well. So our communication also, when we transmit information from one place to another place, it goes through a channel, and that channel is a random channel, okay? It has some characteristics, and we have to model it, we have to understand it, so that we can properly transmit and receive. Therefore, random process, probability is very important. Stochastic process is very important. And information theory, also the baseline of, inform of information theory is also um, math, calculus, communication theory, optimization theory. And in some other areas, again, in electrical engineering, we use heavy physics and electromagnetism. So these are some of the areas that we use. Uh, to build our theories, to build our systems. We built a very complex system. I mean, you can't, I mean, you're talking on the phone, you're using this, but behind this technology, there is an extremely complex system, a network, multiple networks. So building such a complex system requires enormous amount of knowledge, again, in basic science. I'm not gonna go through those details, okay? But what I'm gonna talk about is some of the things that we do and then how will this impact your life in the future? So again, two things that we care in our area is one is information, the other one is communication. 
transfer of this information from one place to another place. Okay? So the transfer of information from one place to another. And information is very important. And nowadays, information is the most important thing, even more precious than gas. You know, gas, energy, everybody is paying attention to energy, how critical it is for your life. But nowadays and in the future, information is going to be even more important than gas, food. I mean, like if my, my kids, my little kids, they don't go anywhere else without their phones. Why? Because they want to be connected. Because they want to be able to transfer and receive. How many of you know your mother's telephone number? Or your, I don't know my daughter's telephone number. I, I, used, to, I used to memorize it. I used to have like 100, 200 telephone numbers in my uh, memory. I used to have all the addresses in my memory. You know some, right? You only know two numbers. I only know my number. I, I don't know my wife's number. Can you believe that? <laughs> because, well, I hope I won't need it. I, knew, I hope, you know, there could be a situation where if I get lost, if the battery is dead, if I'm not connected, then I'm dead. Because I can't even call my mother. So how important the information is. And usually, we know that we can get that information as long as this is with us, as long as this is connected. So you know how critical the information? But that information alone is, yes, it is critical, but the ability to get that information and the ability to transmit your information to somewhere, that's even more important. Nowadays, we take things granted, okay? We, even if we don't know how it is happening, we take things granted. But once you lose it, I mean, like when you lose your health, okay, which everybody healthy, you know, young, capable, but when you lose it, you realize that how important it is, right? So when you lose that capability of communicating and the ability of reaching and then pulling, then you, you will realize how critical it is. I hope you won't, but I just want you to know that what we are doing is at the center of everything that, you know, every vertical, like we are preparing those driverless car, a car that can communicate with another car, a car that can communicate with the surrounding so that we don't need a driver. The car will drive itself better and faster, more reliably. So this requires cars connecting with each other. This requires car observing the environment. Better than your eyes, better than your ears. So this is the enabling technology. We are working nowadays on understanding the human health without a doctor. Even not understanding, okay, that's what we call diagnosing, right? Diagnosing. I'm like, look at this watch. It's called smartwatch, right? Actually, it can do a lot of things for me. It can count my heartbeats. Even it can look at my stress level, okay? I mean, really, it's just you are very stressful, you need to relax, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, do activity. When I sit too long for two hours, warns me, okay, he says, oh, you need to uh, walk, you need to, uh, you know, stand uh, and walk around. So this is just a simple device, probably many of you are using it. And this device is connected to this device. If the phone rings, it's in silent mode now, okay, if it rings, it warns me there is a call. If there is a message here, so these two are con communicating. I mean, this is not human, this is not human, but they are communicating. This is communicating with my earplugs, okay? And everything is communicating with each other. So in the future, we are gonna have some of these inside our body. We already have some insulin injectors. Measures your insulin level, 
if there is a deficiency, injects it. You don't even know it, okay? And there is a uh, pacemakers in the heart. If your heart is not in a harmony, it regulates it. And then in, even in the further future, I can't tell you whether it is five years from now, but I can guarantee you that it will be there. You're going to have chips here, memories, and then your brain is going to is going to be connected to the world, to the network, internet. And uh, you don't have to, again, save anything. If somebody asks you a question, you don't have to know it. That brain is connected, pulls that. So the whole world is going to be part of your brain, your, your physical brain, and there is going to be another brain out there, okay? That's going to be connected to the rest of the world. Memory is going to be connected, brain, your heart is going to be connected, your blood is going to be connected. So this is from the health perspective, I mean, some of you. And of course, we are going to have devices that measures, okay, your, again, sugar level, your this, your that. And you don't even have to go to hospital. These devices will measure if there is something wrong, will warn you. And then we'll tell you that, go to hospital now, okay? And this measurement is not going to happen when you are sick. This is going to happen even when you are healthy, okay? So that, you know, you don't get sick. If, you know, even any small possibility of being, like, sick, being a cancer or, you know, it will detect that. I mean, one of the problems now in cancer is late detection, right? But if we have that kind of capability, we can detect it early and then react to it. So that's what we are working on, okay? Smart health. Integrating our technology, ICT, into the health science. So that we can help doctors on these days, but in the future we can get rid of the doctors. I mean, <laughs> he's a doctor, so I... <laughs> Well, we don't want to get rid of them, but we need to merge. I mean, in our university, for example, if a student wishes, we teach them engineering and medical degree, so dual degrees. So we have very intelligent students now. They are getting dual degrees. Why? Because we believe that engineering will be integrated to the medicine. So you need to learn that as well, and then and develop all these new techniques that can do a better health, smarter health. Smart health is coming. Smart agriculture, we call it precision agriculture, it's coming. Smart transportation is coming. Everything is becoming smart. How? The ability of generating information from your body and the ability of transferring this information to the network, to your doctor, to nurse, or to whoever it is. So this is the area that we are working. So one thing, again, generating that information. Today, how do we generate information? Very easy. Take a photo, okay, that's information. Transmit it to your friend, okay, that's transmission. Today, humans are generating information, but in the future, Everything is going to create information, generate information. Again, your heart is going to generate information. Your uh, uh, devices at the home, refrigerator will generate information. Now, what, what could a refrigerator generate? Well, if the milk is being spoiled, the refrigerator will recognize it and then will warn you, you can't drink this milk. If there is something that's missing, the refrigerator will recognize that. You know, you need to purchase you know, additional water or additional things. So refrigerator will generate information. Your plant will generate information. Your soil, if the water level in the soil, if it is too dry, you don't have to go and check, okay? And then it will generate information. We are gonna be able to utilize the resources more efficiently, and then we are gonna have a better uh, medicine Better agriculture, better transportation, everything is going to be better. But there is one thing. If everything can generate information, 
if everything can transmit information, how do we secure this information? Eventually, I mean, this, is, this, this information generation could be active or passive. Active means you're intentionally requesting that information or basically adjusting uh, for your watch to generate information for your plan. This is active information generation and transmission. But there could be passive as well. Your body can generate information without you knowing it. A signal out there can reach you and then your body can reflect that information from your body. This is a radar system because a missile is coming from an enemy country and we use radar. Why? Because we want to get an information from a missile. If the enemy is transmitting a missile, we transmit the signal and then from the reflection of the signal, we observe the location of the missile, the speed of the missile, so that we can react, right? So that's a missile. But your body can also generate information. Some people can learn your location, where you are. Some people can learn how fast you are moving. Some people can learn many other things that you don't want them to learn. For example, we were doing a project with a company, ISKI, we call it ISKI. ISKI is providing the water to Istanbul. 17, 18 million people are using their system, their network, the pipeline, the water pipelines, okay, water generation. And we want to make this network grid, we call it grid, water grid, more smarter because there is a lot of wastage of water and more importantly the water is not drinkable in Istanbul. You can't just drink the water uh, because you know it has all kind of bacteria and things like that. You can chlor it, okay, you can kill the bacteria, but too much chlor is gonna kill you. So since we don't know how to monitor it and if you chlor it here, by the time it goes to a mile from here the chlor level decreases, and then the bacteria becomes more dominant. But the close by houses, they have more chlor, okay? So you, we don't have any mechanism to adjust the level of chlorization, okay? Because we don't have a smart system. And then we wanted to have that system, a smarter grid, so that we can reduce the leakage, we can also make this water drinkable. Also, we wanted to measure how much water that you are using, we call it telemetry, using those smart meters. Nowadays, what happens here, somebody goes to your house and then reads uh, how much water that you utilized, okay, manually. This is not a good thing, I mean, like, I mean, we have now the technology where we can read everything remotely, because that is generating information and I can, I can capture that information remotely. We don't have to wait a month to get that. Every day, twice, three times. The long story short, while we were working on all this smart water system, a French company who has all these equipments, they said that we'll give everything to you for free. In return, we have to control your data. We have to gather the data in our centers, data centers. Well, we said, now what? Data, okay? How? Dangerous could it be, like a French company is obtaining, gathering our data. In return, they're gonna provide us a network, okay, everything. But then we thought about this, we thought about this, and we said, no, no, this is very dangerous, okay? Giving somebody else all the information that you generate is the worst thing. Maybe you, gain, you get a gain initially, in the short term, but in the long term, you're going to lose because you're going to be dependent on them and then they have all the information about you, okay? I mean, like, imagine a burglar, a bad guy, has that information, water usage information. They can, they can easily understand whether you are at home or not. They can easily gather how many people are at, at home. So this kind of information may not be critical for you today, but all this information eventually, where you are, what you are doing, 
Somebody is watching you continuously, okay? This is, I'm not saying that this is bad. I don't want to scare you. But this is something that you should generate, okay? You should control. If not, then you will be controlled by some other people. And that's what Starling is trying to do. That's what Huawei is trying to do, okay? You should, because you don't, you don't have control on that camera. I mean, when you are using all these applications, probably you are downloading many applications in this phone. They are asking, can I use your location? Can I use your camera? Can I do this? You say, well, well of course, they, you can use my location. What's wrong with that? You can use the camera, but be careful. These guys are gathering information about you. And this is what we call, like in this technology, ICT, information and communication technology is beautiful. And I told you all the good things that we want to do. But on the other hand, you can do a lot of bad things. And cybersecurity today is number one threat in the world. Number one, cybersecurity. And in the future, 10 years from now, you're not going to fight with guns, tanks, missiles. You're going to fight with information, OK? How to protect information, how to invade information, how to gather some other people's information. Because if you control information, you can control the people. Because your brain is generating information. Your brain is connected to the network. If I con control that information, I can control your brain. I don't have to kill you. Because if I kill you, you are dead. But if I control you, you are my slave. Right? That's very scary. So my, my message to you today, if, if you take, I mean, like, of course, I'm going to tell you all, about, all the other things. But the message here is you need to pay attention on what you are doing. One of the great application of this technology is education. In the future, we won't have classrooms like this. In the future, we won't have universities like that. In the future, you will be able to get a course from the best professors wherever they are, from US, from China, from so I was, a, you know, if I can, okay, manage connecting all these best professors, if I can reach getting the best students, okay, I am a university. Because I have the ability of connecting them, okay? I don't need to have classical classrooms. I don't need to have, you know, the classical, uh, you know, universities, okay? All what I need to have is how to utilize this technology, information and communication technology, to create those virtual classrooms. A very beginning of that you tasted during the COVID. You didn't go to school, but you get, there was a classroom utilizing Teams or Zoom or you know, any other things. And you didn't see the professor, but you were still getting the information, right? And professor was generating information. You were receiving it. Sometimes you were generating, and he was receiving it. We saw that. And if we didn't have this technology, I mean, this is the beautiful part of the technology. We use it to continue our educa education. The companies, they didn't go to, uh, to their physical uh, uh, offices. Everybody worked from their home. They had meeting. The companies continued. With minimum impact, I'm not saying that the zero impact, but nowadays, for example, I am uh, with Turkcell, okay? Turkcell is an operator, a telecom operator. Probably some of you are using their service. Now Turkcell is shutting down their facilities. They are saying that, well, we realize that we don't need to have a regular office anymore, so you can work from home. Everybody can work from home. So we used to have a lot of buildings here and there, which is very costly, okay, furniture, this, electricity. We said that, okay, we don't need those, and then you can work from home. So 50%, more than 50% of Tuxel employees, they are working from their home. 
home office, virtual network, virtual uh, company, right? So in the future, this is going to go even further. Labs, exams, everything will change. I mean, trust me, 10 years from now, you are not going to believe the world that you are, you are going to be living. I, I don't know whether I will live 10 more years, but I'm sure you all. So it will be a completely different world. 10 years, we are talking about 10 years. I mean, it's not like a century. It is 10 years. Everything is going to change. Anyway, so let me just tell you a little bit about uh, our technology, again, our technology is information and communication. So the communication is basically there is one transmitter, there is a one receiver in both direction. We transmit an information, okay, from one place to another place. It could be very close. For example, this is a device that communicates. The range of this, what is this? Anybody saw this? In Turkey, we call it, we call it jik jik. I don't know what you call it in your country. This device opens the doors. Okay? How? Using this communication, this generates information. Okay? This, there is a, a tag here, uh, there is a transmitter here. Transmitter transmits, and then when you just put it there, it continuously transmits and checks whether you are the right guy. As if like there is a gatekeeper, okay? Here is like a physical gatekeeper is just standing here. You're seeing, checking your ID. Show me your ID. Okay, you are the right person. You can pass. This is like without having a physical person. This is your ID inside. So he asks for your ID continuously, and then say that this is my ID. So it transmits the ID back. Very simple device. It's free. So cheap. Okay, doesn't even cost money now nowadays. I mean, this is a communication device. And this is communicating. Look, this is communicating. You put it in your ears, no wire, nothing, okay? The music comes into the, your ear. The distance is 10 meters for this one. The distance is 30 centimeters, even less for this one. So there are different types of communication technologies that we are building. For that, for this, for this, and for satellites as well, so communication. But at the end of the day, everything is very simple. One transmitter, one receiver. Transmits information and receives information, checks whether you are the right guy or, like, you know, this information could be very small information. In this case, it's very small. In this case, it is the ID information. Rate is very small, data rate. But when you are transmitting a video, YouTube, Netflix, the information is too much. In the future, when we are looking at the holographic or that virtual reality type of things, which is going to be in the future, then the amount of inf information is going to be even more. Okay. So at the end of the day, we have a transmitter and receiver, and our you know area is without any wire. In the old days, we had wires. Nowadays, everything is going in the direction of wireless, okay? This is what we call wireless communication. And you can connect many things like this or like that. In your home, there is a Wi-Fi access point. Uh, and similarly, we have also uh, networks. For example, this is a network of internet. You all are using it, internet. What internet means, all the computers in the old days, when we say internet, basically connecting com computers with each other, later data centers. But today, internet has grown. The future of internet, not just the computers, not just the data centers, everything is connected with each other. Internet of things, internet of everything. Okay, so the internet is also changing. And part of this internet is fiber connected, okay? But you can't have fiber everywhere. You can't connect your body to a cable, okay? I want to go, I want to move freely. Look, I'm, I'm, I don't have any wire, but I can connect to the internet, okay? With some devices. That's either inside my body or something that I'm carrying. In the old days, we used to call this 
What do we call this? Pocket phone. Because we used to carry it in our pocket. I, and this is something that we call it. Also, you know, we used to have the, the cable version of this. Is those of you who remember, we used to connect it. So everything now is becoming part of that internet, partially with wired connection, but mostly with wireless connection. Okay? So that's the network. Network of everything. And of course, every once in a while, in order to, to be able to connect you to the closest point in the internet, to the closest wired point, like Wi-Fi access point, in every home you have access point, Access point is there already connected to the internet with wire, but the last portion, which is you, is wireless. So there is, like, you know, I'm not saying that everything is wireless, but there is also wire and wireless combination. Okay? But at the end of the day, our goal is to connect everything. The more is the better. So these are some of those connections. I don't know how, how I am doing it with my time. Uh, so this is the one of the most you know, important technology which we use, everybody use, is also a network, but we call it this cellular network. Cellular network, your phones, your cell phones are using. So these cellular networks, we have towers, base stations. These towers are connected to the internet and helps you connect to the internet. Okay, so it's kind of like a helper, an intermediate body that connects you. You connect to this, and then this is connected to the rest of the world, and you are automatically connected to the rest of the world. But not all the connections can go through this. For example, in my phone, this is connected to my cell tower. You don't need to connect this to the cell tower, but this can be connected to this, okay? So because this is a different technology, we call it Bluetooth. These are connected. This doesn't require a cell tower. This is a standalone network. So there are so many different kinds of networks out there that we are utilizing wirelessly. Again, the goal is the same. Communicating and information generation, OK? So I don't want to get into the details. I don't want to bore you. But uh, so there is a network. So but. I want to tell you something about how these things are happening. Probably you are wondering. It's all about like, communication, transmitting information. There is a carrier that carries this information. And that carrier is a sinusoidal signal. Have you heard about a sinusoidal signal? Sign, like basically sinus. Sinusoidal signal. And of course, electric current is also a sinusoidal signal. With 60 hertz in the United States, 50 hertz here in Turkey, alternating current, basically, it basically fluctuates. So there is an electric current, and there is also an electromagnetic energy. So what we do, basically, a transmitter, a very simple way of generating a transmitter, generate an electric current, and then put the information on the top of an electric current. That's why we call it carrier. We always need a carrier carry information. So that, that alternating signal is carrying that information. But not in the form of electric energy, electric current, but in the form of electromagnetic energy. So we have to somehow convert this electric energy to electromagnetic energy. There are two different types of energy. We always can convert energy from one form to another. But this is one way of, for example, do you have any wireless charger in your home? Wireless charger used to charge your phone or anything with by plugging in but today you, you don't need how does it work very simple you have a charger that converts that electric energy into electromagnetic energy that electromagnetic magnetic energy travels it travels you don't see it but it travels so then your phone has also a device that converts that electromagnetic energy back to electric energy so that you don't have to connect this. So this is beautiful. So this guy, I told you that this guy transmits information, right? But it doesn't have battery in it. It doesn't have battery. It can last for 
years without battery. It doesn't have its own energy. If it doesn't have its own energy, energy, how can this transmit information? Very easy. There is energy here in the air, okay? It basically captures that energy and uses that energy to transmit back. This is also basically somehow a wireless charger. So it charges itself, okay, and then transmits that information back. So the basic philosophy science in the wireless charger is energy conversion. Convert electrical energy to electromagnetic energy. Electromagnetic energy can travel in the air. Nowadays, for example, they are building chargers for electric vehicles. You can charge your electric vehicle again by plugging it into a power source, or you can just go and then it will charge itself. I mean, just you know, put your car somewhere where there is an electromagnetic energy sufficient enough, that electromagnetic energy will charge your car. So conversion of energy. So now the radio electro the radio wireless signal that we are transmitting, generating is an electromagnetic signal. And it travels. And it travels very fast. How fast? With the speed of light. Three times ten to the power eight okay meters per second. So, so fast. I mean, you can communicate with America, with the United States, without even noticing it. Because it travels faster than any plane, faster than everything. So, that's why we like electromagnetic signals. Electromagnetic signals travel very fast. And if we can somehow put information on the top of electromagnetic signal, there you go, we have a transmitter. If you can somehow capture electromagnetic signal, receive it, and then isolate that information at the receiver, that's what you call the receiver. How simple it is, right? So we use that sinusoidal signals, okay, sinusoidal signals in the form of electric energy, put information on the top of it, and antenna, converse antenna, converse that electrical energy into electromagnetic energy, that electromagnetic energy radiates in the air, okay? And then that radiated energy will be received by someone far from you, depending on the type of sinusoid. Some sinusoid signals can travel very far, some not, depending on the technology that you are using and you have electromagnetic signal coming from satellites, geostationary satellites, you know how far they are? They are transmitting electromagnetic energy and we still receive it. Travels very far. The, the type of antennas, the type of transmitters, the type of receivers, and the type of carriers. So we have too many different types of carriers. But at the end of the day, it's a sinusoidal signal. What is the difference between one and other is the frequency. And by changing the frequency of the carrier, you can use all the spectrum. Spectrum. Maybe you heard about the spectrum. Spectrum is the air can transmit signal with different frequencies. Some can use this, some can use that. Some technologies are more suitable for this, some technologies are more suitable for that. So that is the idea. We use spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum. Who owns the spectrum? Government owns spectrum. Who allocates the spectrum? Government, through some auctions. Government controls the spectrum. So far, in terrestrial communication. Terrestrial communication is where, you know, where we are living, right? In the space, government is not controlling it. The world has basically regulatory bodies, okay? They control the spectrum. But at the end of the day, spectrum is monitored and controlled. You can't just transmit anything or at anywhere because otherwise there will be interference. Imagine that there is pipelines or lanes, like, like cars are moving in a lane, right, in a, on the road. We also have lanes in the air 
where the information is flown. Okay? Different lanes, many, 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 many. And, and you can communicate, you can communicate. Everybody is communicating, but they are not interfering because they use different lanes. Somebody is allocating you the proper lane that you are going to be utilizing. I have, uh, I am like slide number nine. I have 90 slides, so it took me like about 15 minutes for nine slides, so 50 times 10. So we're going to be here for like 10 times 15 minutes, <laughs> like almost eight hours, right? Of course not, because Lokman probably is going to be here. Uh, the next speaker is a good friend of mine. Uh, he will talk about some other things. Probably he'll talk about antennas to you, because he's an antenna expert. I briefly talk about the antenna, right? Antenna, what does antenna do? Antenna converts electric energy into electromagnetic energy. Why? Because electromagnetic energy can travel in wireless channels. I don't know whether I'm boring you, but uh, again, these are transmitters, receivers, channels. So there are different types of communication. Let me just use this. Ah, this one here, different times of communication, point-to-point -point communication, both way, this way, that way, and we have also communication, point-to-multi-point, this base station is communicating with all these users, all these users are communicating back, so point-to-multi-point. We have communication broadcasting in your home, somebody is transmitting, everybody else is receiving, right? We have communication like TVs, radios, so, so many different types of communication technologies. And I mentioned about spectrum. Different technologies are using different spectrum. AM radio, FM radio, TV. Everybody has some allocated spectrum for transmission and reception. All those pipelines. So, and also telemetry. So these are the, this is a transmitter. I, you know, I don't want to get into all details, but it's, it seems very simple to you. But really, 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 there is a lot of science behind it. So much science. I mean, like designing. We can still build a chip. You know that? Building a chip. Only a few countries are able to do that. Taiwan is one of them. China wasn't able to do that. Now they are going to be doing. And uh, none of the... You know, I, I don't know which countries are you from, but in Turkey we don't have that capability. I don't know whether one of your countries have that capability. No. So these are the things that we are using in electronic devices, even in the cars, in phones, everywhere that we are using it, okay? I mean, isn't that shame that we are not able to do that? Right? We should be able to do that. Anyways, so... One last thing that I want to talk about, you know, I'm getting warnings, like five minutes warnings. In today's world, the, everything I mentioned that can generate information, and sometimes this information can be in the form of analog. My, my speech is analog, <clears throat> because my body is analog, my vocal cord is analog. Some information in computer is already in the form of digital. But in today's world, any information, no matter what the source is, whether analog or digital, we always convert them to digital and store them in digital, transmit them in digital. So our communication, modern communication, is digital communication. Our modern communication is digital storage. There are so many beautiful things that we, do, we can do in digital world where we cannot do in analog world. When I was in my undergrad, okay, when I was learning communication, the communication was analog, like, like 30 years ago. Today, digital. So in this, that's why, you know, you have smaller devices. That's why you have these USBs. I'm like, so small USBs. It has like one gigabyte memory in it. I'm like, so small. I mean, you can't store pretty much everything in it. Why? Because of this digital world. World is going into the digital. And understanding the digital world, the ability to process the digital signal, there is a new science that we develop. 
digital signal processing. A new science that we develop, digital communication, digital storage, digital. What is digital? One and zero. One and zero. Huh. How can one and zero, like a speech becomes one and zero? I mean, some people, some physicists, they say that the human is also consists of one and zeros. The brain definitely one and zeros. Okay, our brain is all about one and zeros. We have basically transmitters, neurons, can generate these synapses and which we can characterize them one and zeros. But it's too many of those. Still, we don't know how it works. There is a network actually. This is also a network. So at the end of the day. You know, we are dealing with ones and zeros. We are converting things to ones and zeros. We are converting things back from ones and zeros to. So I'm, for example, in your phone, can you imagine that? Actually, you speak. I'm speaking to my mom. My speech is converted to ones and zeros. It goes, ones and zeros goes in the air in the form of a waveform. And then the received, mom, my mom receives that ones and zeros, and then it's the same voice. I mean, like, <laughs> ones and zeros makes the exact voice, exact thing. The TV that you are watching is the ones and zeros is being received and then converted back. So we are dealing with ones and zeros. That's the information that everything is generating, or eventually everything is going to be converted to that form. Okay, that's why we call it digital world, digital Analog to digital conversion, digital to analog conversion. There is a lot of things actually, you know. I teach this in whole semester, which I gave you like a one minute briefing. It's just a, like a science, I mean like science, a very big science. Anyways, so much to talk. I'm glad that you are here. And I'm glad that you listen to me carefully. I mean like even though it's not your domain, I hope that I was able to express, you know, what I'm doing, okay, the importance of what I'm doing. And if you are a little kid, okay, or, a, you know, a son, daughter, who is in, at the age of, you know, educating, motivate them to study this science, okay? It's a beautiful science. I love it, okay? I love it. And my kids always say that, Dad, aren't you getting tired? No, I'm working on a, such an amazing technology, such an amazing science, this is my hobby. Once it becomes your hobby, I told you in the beginning, I said that even Istanbul is beautiful, I am not enjoying it because I have something else to enjoy. Okay? This hobby is so overwhelming, I don't even go out and then see, I mean, this is the first time I'm seeing this place. Such a beautiful place. Yeah, it's a weakness, but, uh, you know, I love it. Okay? So, if you have your nephews, your kids. I'm looking for good students, PhD students and master students. I'm paying them, giving them dormitories. The reason that I'm doing that, okay, because I want to train more and more people in this area. I want to educate because I, I don't have much time to live. Maybe 10 years, I don't know, who, who knows? I have so much knowledge. I learned a lot. I mean, I work for companies. I work for universities in the United States. I learned a lot of things. I don't want to take this to the graveyard, okay? I want to transfer this information, okay? I generated a lot of information over the last 30 years. But I want to transfer this information, okay? Like, the, our area is ICT, but if I cannot transfer this information, generated information, I will be first feeling, feeling guilty and, and you know, I, I, I want to move on, okay, with some peace with myself, okay? And that peace is only possible if I can transfer this information and educate the right people. And then, remember I told you, this is a technology where you can do a lot of good things for the humanity, but this is the same technology that you can do a lot of bad things. I want to train the right people who can do good things to the humanity, okay? Not all the people. So the, I'm very selective on choosing the right people. If you know there are some right people, 
in this, you know, in your neighborhood, okay, your relatives, send them to me so that I can transfer this information. With that, I want to thank you all for being here and enjoy your time. Thank you.